everybody, how's it going? Today is actually the 4th of July, so for the 37% of the people watching this video that are from the United States of America, I'm wishing you a happy day. It's the birth of our country, or whatever, like whatever, congrats to our country, we made it another year. Let's do some fireworks, let's have a little bit of fun, but uh, we got the whole family in the kitchen right now preparing dinner for tonight, so there might be some background noise that's a little bit uh, unavoidable in today's episode. But we're playing a five-minute game of chess going up against Rebi Quita 32 who is somebody I've never played before. So I'm excited to potentially play a holiday version of the Wagon Gambit. <laughs> B5. This is a fun one that can throw D4, C4 players off. E5. That was my follow-up. And when they recapture this pawn, which they should do, I'm hopping into E4, immediately threatening to win the game with a bishop to b4. So we will see how my opponent does it. Knight f3 is one of the best moves. Knight c3 is one of the most popular tries by the opponents. But usually, this is enough to take a brand new opponent by surprise. And there's a million tricks and traps that I will hopefully remember if my opponent does anything that's not that. There's also a variety of queen moves, many of which are a mistake. Let's see. You know, it's it. the ball is in the opponent's court right now. This one is uh, very, very dubious, but I don't know why. I keep coming back to it. I think it's just the surprise value, the potential for a lot of trick lines that are very impressive <laughs> when you look at them with the computer. Now, if the queen goes here, I'm pretty sure. So the opponent is lined up on this. Eh... So do I force them back? There's no way that it's d5 allowing this. I'm trying to remember what I meant to do. I think it's just bishop b4. It's just kind of, you know, it's just, it's not as thrilling as a lot of other continuations. But let's see what we can do. Is it possible that I can play d5 and queen to f6 immediately? This would be something that would be, you know, I don't know. D5 is always interesting. Sacking a pawn just to be able to at least get this bishop coming out. This feels potentially problematic for the opponent. And I can imagine the opponent getting very greedy going for everything. So let's let's go with this. Let's see how they want to handle this. <laughs> I'm just lined up with the queen. Don't worry, it doesn't mean anything. Would you like a fourth pawn? This one I think I would have to recapture. Sadly, I might have to actually recapture one of these pawns. But I'm just in this to develop my pieces as quickly as possible. I'm ready to get castled. I'm ready to bring more pieces in. And uh, I'm trying to figure out if I can go here with some future idea of getting my a knight to c5 at some moment. Um, this feels like the right square for the knight because the knight eventually will come here at some moment. But let's keep this pin here for as long as possible. A3 is slow, and therefore, hopefully, there should be some sort of punishment for it. Not exactly sure what it would be, but my queen might be coming here very quickly. Considering doing so now. Or just castling. So the opponent is going to go here and then try to take my knight and remove the defender of my bishop. I need to be aware of this. I am just going to castle. You know, it's important to follow principles when you play the game of chess. But, uh, ah, this was the idea. The idea was to get this guy out, and they're delaying the development on the king side. They're also giving up a piece. I, I, I suppose I shouldn't refuse this one. What? <laughs> All right, I will accept this piece. The opponent is, is counter-gambiting or blundering? So often, they feel about the same. The difference between a blunder and a counter-gambit is quite small. Ha! Huh, look at that. 12-move win with the wagon gambit. So let's just take time to make sure we go back. and let's. I'm trying to learn from every game this queen c2 variation that the opponent came up with. Let's go ahead and investigate. Now, you're going to notice that this is not Stockfish's favorite opening, but after knight to c3, you can play b5. Takes, takes. When they capture, this is correct. I've been playing with e5. This is the wagon gambits. Now, as you can tell, Stockfish is not a huge fan. It's plus 2.4. This might be even more dubious than the Stafford gambit. 
But uh, the idea is that you're going to be developing very, very quickly. And on this move, you already make a very serious threat. And the threat is uh, to bring this bishop in. So some move, like queen to d5, leads to immediate disaster because it allows bishop to b4. With the idea that after this, there's some taking here. This is the kind of situation that uh, can lead to a lot of trouble for white. So white needs to do something about it. And queen c2 does address it in a certain way because it defends this square. So now after bishop to b4 check, the knight is able to go back. And the queen, by moving to c2, has prevented me from just simply taking twice on c3. Now around here, I wasn't exactly sure. d5 scores insanely well, and I'm pretty sure we've done a whole bunch of prep on this at some point, honestly. I'm just playing the wagon gambits by the seat of my pants. Sometimes I, I fall off the wagon, but today things went incredibly correct. Bishop f5 is the theory, and it scores insanely well, and there's only one good move here for white, and it's very difficult to find, but it's bishop to d2. So I guess the idea is that we can't really take this because then this bishop would be hanging, so that doesn't make um, a whole lot of sense. And now that this knight is unpinned, you're threatening to just win material here. So it basically forces some sort of concession, some sort of trade here. And the g4, of course. What the heck? Come on, man. No opponent is playing g4 here. But uh, still wild and fun. But that did not happen in today's game. Opponent went to b3, which is definitely the most popular move. So this is why this wins so often for black. Knight c6 is given as best. I suppose I went to the wrong square. From c6, the knight threatens to go here. So on some move, I don't know, let's just make some random move. I'm thinking that maybe I have this as like a possible tactic with the idea that if here I would be forking the queen and then possibly, you know, there might be some sort of checkmating attack as well. Um, but instead of that, I went to a6, defending, knowing that in a lot of these lines, a knight likes to come to c5 if somehow this bishop ever gets defended. Of course, the opponent has g4 here, <laughs> which, well, I mean, what the heck is g4? I mean, I guess it makes some sense. The bishop can't take, uh, not because of taking, because of the pin, but because of here. Okay, sure, g4. Dear future opponents with white, you guys should play g4 a lot more in these positions. Uh, but then the opponent blundered a piece. So that's it. All right, time to go celebrate the 4th of July. Hope you like that. Wagon Gambit, easy wins. See you later.